fix it close the shutter and then close the chamber and after that actually vacuum part vacuum will start so first you have to start with rough pump so roughing vacuum pump as i told in the last class 10 to the minus 3 around tor i mean uh, millibar 10 to the minus 3 millibar you may reach up to this with this roughing pump and when you reach that vacuum then only that high end vacuum like diffusion pump or turbo molecular pump should start and when this will be running you can close the roughing pump that is actually not required then this turbo molecular pump or the diffusion pump will take you to 10 to the minus 6 to minus 7 that millibar and in that vacuum condition then you can start the deposition okay so this is that actually that schematic and today actually again we'll little bit we'll try to understand that different rough pump as well as this high-end pump so just actually here i i like to ask one small thing last class i told that this vacuum system not only used in thin film deposition it's also used in characterization so can anyone tell like in let's say the scanning electron microscopy sometimes we need lesser than 10 to the minus 3 millibar so that means roughing pump is not sufficient to achieve that pump but in most of the cases the turbo molecular pump is used nowadays so why why not diffusion pump why turbo molecular pump can anyone tell last class i explain can anyone Can anyone tell what is the advantage of this turbo molecular pump over to this vacuum and uh, the diffusion pump? In particular, scanning electron microscopy. Anyone? So last class actually I told, like actually if you used here this diffusion pump, so diffusion pump will have some diffusion oil. So sometimes what happened that diffusion oil vapor may contaminate the chamber. So that is actually for characterization unit actually you have to be very careful. So that is the purpose actually that nowadays everywhere in the characterization unit, the turbo molecular pump is being used. Okay, so let's come to this vacuum pump one. So now in today's class that I'll talk about, I mean, as I told the last class that we'll see the some, some of this video and uh, to understand and in details of these three pump. So as I told that in the rotary vein pump that is actually mostly used in case of vacuum chamber. So they are actually how it's work actually, this is, you can see that this is, this side is connected to the chamber and this is that outlet. So this is, is stage one is the induction so this is from this inside that it is actually whatever that inside air is there it will be exposed to up to this region then is that isolation region you can see that by the rotation of the shaft so here you can see that this is actually trapped here it's isolation then actually that it will be compressed because this valve will not open until unless the pressure is become little bit higher than this atmosphere so then the compression then when it will be this higher then it will exhaust it will out from here to this atmosphere so now let's have a look some of this uh, this video Yeah, so you can see actually I just mute this um, uh, audio because that is not required. So there are four kind of rotary pump, screw pump, gear pump, low wave pump, and the vein pump. So very fast we'll see.
So first is the screw pump. So in the screw pump, you can see that that is actually this movement of the shaft actually will be like a screw movement. Yeah, you can see that this movement is nothing but a screw movement. This one. So if it's rotate, so it will be one pitch, the rotor. And this is actually inlet. So there are two inlet and this is the outlet. Okay. So this is actually how this compaction is happening. And here, this is outlet. Second is the gear pump. So in that gear pump, it's, it's like a gear. This is, you can see the gear movement. Again, you can see that this is the inlet and this is the outlet. And this is that rotating the gear that where this compaction is happening. And this third one is the lobe pump. Yeah, this is particular shape that is called the lobe shape. You can see that the inlet and this is the outlet. How you can see the lobe, uh, this rotor is rotating. And final one is that vein pump. So here, just you please just try to recall. You can see that actually eccentric movement will be this this, this, this one. It looks like, and this is spring arrangement, and it will move. So whatever the stage I told that you can see that this, um, it will actually make this one. Okay. So, so this is actually that this, this movement, you can see that this particular, how it's actually with this movement, this four region induction, isolation, comp that compression and exhaust, it's happening. So once again, just I'll come back there. So you can see here, yeah. So this is actually this, how it's very fast is happening. And your this four stage actually is happening here. So this part is clear. Any confusion on this rotary vein pump? Okay. So this rotary vein pump, that is actually roughing pump and this pump, this pressure down to rough vacuum. So 0 0.1 pressure or one into the minus three torr. This is actually with reach, it's actually you can achieve. And this necessary because the diffusion of turbo molecular pump has trouble starting from this atmosphere pressure. And usually the rotary vein pump can have oil or oil free, okay, both. So this is the mechanism of this rotary, um, um, uh, this rotary mechanical pump. Now let's move to this diffusion pump. So in diffusion pump, actually, just try, I'll explain and then I'll move to that video. So what is happening here? So this is the diffusion pump picture. So there is a boiler and here this oil will be there. So this oil actually, May, I mean, it's like boiling point will be around 200 to 300 or sometimes more than 300. And heavy oil is basically used, silicon oil kind of thing. And this oil actually with this boiler, it will be evaporate 
and you can see that evaporated stream is moving then this is actually one cooling arrangement will be there and this side also cooling arrangement i'll explain the mechanism of the cooling arrangement so then what will happen that this stream actually it will move so that means the liquid will convert to gaseous stage that oil molecule so when it will come to the gaseous stage that this, there is a nozzle is there okay so outside the nozzle this is the vacuum region because it is actually exposed to the vacuum because already you reached into the minus 3 i mean millibar by using roughing pump this then what will happen that the, here some nozzles are there so this nozzle will convert actually the high velocity this i mean more gas molecule they are actually movement to a high velocity z and this high velocity z will move in this direction okay so this pressurized z will convert to high velocity z this high velocity z that atom immediately there will be a collision with this gaseous molecule so whatever the gaseous molecule left out in the chamber this gaseous molecule it will come here this is a natural movement and then what will happen this downwards jet will hit this gaseous molecule and due to this heating there will be momentum transfer and this gaseous molecule movement it will make a direction towards downwards and then what will happen this gas molecule will hit sorry this um, 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 oil gas molecule oil oil molecule in gaseous stage that actually will hit on the wall and immediately it will try to condense okay but where is this gas molecule that is actually will with because it got that acquired the momentum and it will goes downward so all these things together it will come to the downward and immediately it can this outlet is there and from that top to bottom there will be a continuous pressure build up okay so this is actually then this is the backing pump backing pump means actually it's actually um like when pressure will be sufficient then actually this through this actually this this buffel that act, this uh, whatever that molecule will be there accumulated molecule will go up or out go out okay so that means that there is a pressure continuously will increase from this top to bottom and due to this continuous action and it will be that this backing pump will release continuously release so that means that here pressure build up will be high and then it will go outside whereas what will happen that the gas molecule is this oil molecule oil molecule will condense because of the cooling arrangement and this is actually heavy oil we are using so that is that this is because of this arrangement in this region also some of the oil molecule if it comes again it will condense because you can see the cooling arrangement is throughout up to this we have arranged the cooling arrangement so what will happen this oil molecule will always condense and it will come back but this gas molecule like hydrogen i sorry i sorry oxygen and nitrogen that is actually will not condense in this uh, this is actually normal water cooling and it will actually remain as the gaseous stage and it will go out so this is that principle of this diffusion pump and let's have a look this how this diffusion pump is is working so diffusion pump so this is actually how this diffusion pump is looks like as i told so bottom there is a heater and here this heating will be there this is oil chamber then let's have a look so you can see that heater this is a heating coil and this heating coil also that it's actually sometimes like you know normal heater if you found that there is a there actually breakage of the coil then it will not work so same thing actually it may happen sometime that due to the overheating so this kind of problem why it's arise i'll tell like you i mean like uh, it i faced also the uh, similar problem like actually i remember that when i run that uh, the depo depo uh, eva yeah, i am uh, this i re achieve sufficient vacuum and then i was doing the deposition suddenly that actually water supply stopped 
So if that's in that situation, water supply stopped, what will happen? This cooling will be stopped and immediately here it will be overheating. And this overheating immediately can burn this coil. So this kind of problem, you have to be very careful. So during that deposition, throughout the deposition, water cooling should be continued. So you have to make sure. And nowadays the latest, uh, this machine actually, latest uh, technology, whatever uh, is implemented. So they are actually if cooling arrangement. If you not switched on your cooler or water circulation, you can't, I mean, see your automatically your, um, 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 this, um, um, this uh, diffusion pump will be closed or it will be stopped working like that. So, but actually this old system that does not have the facilities always. So in some, some of the places you may see that actually manually you need to start. Okay, so there you have to be very careful that during this operation, water actually should be sufficient and water flow should be there. So this you can see that how this, I mean, then this, this is that molecule, gas, gaseous molecule. So then this is coming on the top and this is that, as I told, this is the nozzle. So this nozzle actually, the role of this nozzle, what they're doing, this pressurized vapor is convert to high velocity jet because this gaseous molecule need to have a collision with that gaseous molecule, that nitrogen or oxygen inside the chamber. So this is actually, you can see how it's going up and this is actually three stage mostly. Three. And it's actually, four. sorry, in this case, this, there are four stage. And now this is, I just come here. Yeah. So this is actually normal flow of this gaseous molecule. And you can see this gaseous molecule, when it's come in contact, it's actually that it will be, it will, due to the momentum transfer, it will acquire this velocity towards the downward. And this is actually, it's coming down and when it's coming down, there is a outlet. So in, through this outlet, it will try to escape gaseous molecule as well as oil molecule. But oil molecule will condense because of this cooling arrangement and gaseous molecule will come. A gaseous molecule actually will go out. And there is a continuous, if you go down, the pressure buildup will be more and more. And in this region, that pressure buildup will be high, very high, then only it will go out. So this is actually how it's happening. How is that? This happening. So this cooling is extremely important in diffusion pump. So that is actually very much required. So purpose of the cooling, one is actually, it will condense this, this um, um, uh, oil molecule and second, this there should not be any overheating of this heater part, okay? So how it's happening here. And in this region also you can see that this is this oxygen or nitrogen molecule is go up and here this is extra oil, whatever the condensed oil is coming back to the chamber. You can see that this is the extra oil is actually coming back to the chamber. And this is how it looks like. Yeah. So in that, let's understand the so diffusion pump used a high speed jet or vapor to direct gas molecule in the pump throw down into the bottom of the pump and out the exhaust. So from the top to the bottom, it will move. Most modern diffusion pump use silicon oil as this working fluid. So as I told that high, at this boiling point oil or heavy oil is being used. And this high speed jet is generated by the boiling fluid and directing the vapor through a jet assembly. So high speed jet is generated by this boiling fluid and directed the vapor through a jet assembly. And note this oil is gaseous when entering the nozzle and within the nozzle the flow chamber uh, flow changes from laminar to supersonic to molecular. This part is very important because 
this gas through the nozzle when it's come out so this is actually it will come to the lamellar flow region because this is already in the vacuum okay and this often and this now question is that last class i told that this lamellar and molecule so molecular flow means we need to do the deposition in the molecular flow regime so supersonic that is actually in between so but you have to at the end you have to reach to that molecular flow regime and often that several jets are used in series to enhance this pumping action so several jets are used to enhance the pumping action so sometimes the diffusion pump you need to run for half an hour to one hour to achieve the vacuum okay because some of this molecule will come here so some of the molecule will come here so that means this and if you run for a longer time then only the pressure build up will be there and it will go up go out so that's why there is a continuous you need to run this diffusion pump and this action evaporation then the vapor jet momentum transfer and then downward stream of this oxygen and nitrogen molecule and condensation of this oil molecule these things repeatedly should be done so then outside the vacuum pump is cooled using a water line that is actually always is required and very important as vapor jet impact the outer cooler cell of this diffusion pump the working fluid condenses and is recovered and directed back to the boiler this is very important this this liquid actually this um, 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 oil actually should be intact and that should not go out so this is actually cooling arrangement is very important and diffusion pump has no moving part are required that durable and reliable and they can function over pressure 10 to the minus 10 to minus 2 millibar and one major disadvantage of the diffusion pump is the tendency to backstream oil into the vacuum chamber which can contaminate the surface inside the chamber so that is the reason in characterization unit that diffusion pump is not preferable where turbo molecular pump is most preferable the oil of a diffusion pump cannot be exposed to the atmosphere when hot if this occurs then oil will burn and have to replace so that is also important thing so like that is actually you have to pay attention like just let's say that you have finished the deposition and you should not open the chamber so if you you need to allow some time to cool down and then only you need to open the chamber because some of this some of the contamination can burn this oil now next is the turbo molecular pump so in turbo molecular pump what is happening in turbo pump the gas molecule gain momentum in a desired direction by replaced collision with a moving solid surface so let's have a look in the video first so this is actually the turbo molecular pump how it looks like this is the inside and this rotor and stator that arrangement the blade so this is electric drive unit ceramic ball bearing because you need to rotate rotor shaft and then stator blade rotor blade okay so two arrangement is there and permanent magnetic bearing is there because very high speed and safety bearing now we'll see that this is that movement starts and you can see like a ping pong ball that gaseous molecule and also you have to keep in your mind gas should be in the molecular flow regime means you have achieved sufficient vacuum you see that when it that momentum transfer in this case by that collision with the rotor or the stator blade and after that collision this is not going up it's going down because of this arrangement of in this case that rotor and stator 
that you can see that these balls are gaseous molecules are going down. And you can see that frequency that it's actually close by. When it goes down, this is actually more close by. You can see that how it's happening, that diffuse reflector, the stator with the stator, then it's how it's moved. Then you can see, then you can see this, it's actually coming down. How it's coming down like a, ping pong ball. And this is actually little bit, it's, it's, you can see that here this bit compact, but here is not that compact. So that means the purpose is that downwards that there will be a pressure buildup with the accumulation of this molecule. And finally it will exhaust. This when pressure will be high, so here it will be this it will be exhaust from this bottom from the bottom. So once again this part. Just repeat for your understanding. This is how it's happening. You can see that this is actually coming down. You can see from this schematic uh, diagram cross-sectional view, this is actually how this gaseous molecule is coming down and top portion, this is little bit relaxed, but here it's a compact, the rotor and stator. So purpose is that their pressure actually from this top to bottom, it should be, should be high, okay? And in this case, the pressure will build up and then only it will goes out. So now actually let's understand what is happening. So in turbo molecular pump that gas molecule gain momentum in a desired direction by repeated collision with a moving solid surface. Already we have seen in turbo, the spinning tur turbine rotor with angle blade. So these, uh, these are actually angle blade. Here you can see, hit the gas molecule from this inlet of this pump towards the exhaust in order to create a vacuum. Okay, so this is actually exhaust is here and this up to that exhaust, it will bring it, this, this gas molecule. And turbo employed multiple stage consisting of rotor stator pair. This is actually rotor stator pair mounted in series where the gas captured by upper stage is pushed into this lower stage. So it will be captured by the upper state and pushed into the lower state and successively compressed to the level of this four vacuum or the vacuum pump pressure. So four vacuum or the vacuum pump pressure means it will from the top to bottom, it will pressure will build up and here this it will reach sufficient vacuum, sufficient pressure so that it will go up. So last class someone asked that what is the four vacuum? So four vacuum is nothing but that actually it needs to read to that high, high pressure, then only it will goes out using this pump action. Okay, that is called the backing pump. So here on backing pump arrangement will be there. So it will actually some valve arrangement, it will open and it will go out. So this is actually again the schematic diagram, how it looks like already I explained the rotor and stator is there and this magnetic bearing and this is actually, it will move, ceramic bearing is there and it will move with a high speed. This is actually high pumping speed and this high compression ratio. So you can see that arrangement, this is a compact. So here actually from this gas actually pressure will from the top to bottom, it will, it will become relatively high. And finally, through that exhaust, it will go out. So turbo molecular pump operate at high speed and this friction heat buildup imposed the design limitations. Some turbo molecular pump use the magnetic bearing to reduce the friction and oil contamination. Okay, so this friction will be very high because it is rotating with a very high speed. So that part need to be considered and at atmospheric pressure, the mean free path of air is 70 nanometer. So that is, and that kind of blade 
I mean, small gap blade is impossible to build up. So that's why this turbo molecule turbo blade cannot be built in such a small clearance. So we should not expose this turbo molecular pump in the atmosphere. So what will happen? Huge amount of gas will come there and it will it may destroy. So this turbo molecular pump should operate when you will reach sufficient vacuum. And this turbo is a versatile pump can generate many degree of vacuum from intermediate vacuum 10 to the minus 2 Pascal to up to ultra high vacuum 10 to the minus 8 Pascal. And this is actually no oil is there. So oil contamination problem is not there. Oil burning problem is not there. So this is the advantage and this is the latest technology. And that's why this turbo molecular pump is nowadays used and this is relatively faster than the diffusion pump. So this is actually this turbo molecular pump. Again, the gas molecule interact with the spinning blade and our preferential force downward. That is, we have seen high vacuum required the rotation 20,000 to 90,000 revolution per minute. So you can understand how that high speed rotation is there. Okay. And generally that work between 10 to the minus 3 to minus 7 torr and ineffective that before gas in, in molecular flow. So this you should have sufficient vacuum, then only you should turn on this turbo molecular pump. So these are actually different part of the turbo molecular pump like bearing, the ceramic or magnetic are also hybrid is sometimes use rotor, this blade configuration and the cooling. So in this case also due to the high rotation, there will be actually heat generation will be there. So always you should have a cooling arrangement. And last, Actually, this is an entrapment pump. This is used in some special purpose, not in mostly in, I mean, they are rarely used in thermal evaporation unit. It's actually, I mean, in other places like this, this uh, like in characterization, like if you want to do some, let's say, current voltage measurement in liquid helium atmosphere. So then you have to reach the liquid helium atmosphere, then only you need to apart from this experiment uh, they are actually cryo pump is used so cryo pump trap the gas and that vapor by condensing them on a cold surface so this is actually cryo means liquid nitrogen or liquid helium is being used they are only effective on some gases depending on the freezing and the boiling point of the gas relative to the cryo pump temperature and during cryo trapping molecules increase their resistance re residence time on a cold surface without actually freezing so it's kind of trapping and and there are a delay between this molecular impinging on the surface and rebounding from it and kinetic energy being lost that molecule slow down so uh, kinetic energy will be lost and the molecular molecules slow down and it will actually kind of this condense on the surface uh, so this action actually it will then what will happen that again if you if you actually i um, mean uh, temperature will up then again this whatever the condensed molecule again it will it will so reversible process it will go to the chamber but by that time actually your action will be over so in cryo pump, what will happen that you should have first um, um, uh, like one uh, rotary pump and the rotary pump will give some vacuum. Then only you need to pour the liquid nitrogen or liquid helium and then you have to trap this inside this oxygen as well as nitrogen molecule by freezing them. That is the purpose in this cryo pump. So this but this cryo pump is not that I mean it's used in deposition chamber. So with that one, I just uh, finish it here itself and uh, that if you have uh, very fast any questions, you can you can ask. Otherwise, I'll take the attendance. Is it so clear? What's the requirement of, so huh? what's the requirement of oil in diffusion pump? Just a minute. So which pump you are talking about? So diffusion pump, uh, the diffusion oil requirement, why is it okay. there? Oh, okay, okay, let's take the attendance, I will tell you. Yeah, what is your question, once again? What is the purpose of? Utsab, please, can you please repeat Diffu your question? Diff 
So what is the purpose of diffusion oil and diffusion pump? Yeah. So I'll go to the video. So this is actually the diffusion pump. So as I told, the diffusion pump, how it works. So here one oil is required and this oil should be high boiling point. And this oil actually is a heavy oil. This oil will be vaporized. And if it's vaporized, it should be in the closed chamber, it will vaporize. So that it will be actually, its pressure will build up. Then through this nozzle, this outside, this is a vacuum. And inside, this high pressure is built up with this particular oil molecule. Now this oil molecule will have a high velocity and it is exposed to outside. Outside is a vacuum and this is connected to your chamber. This chamber is a roughing vacuum is there 10 to the minus 2 to minus 3. So what will happen? The gas molecule, oxygen or nitrogen, whatever is natural flow, it will coming here. This molecule will heat. There will be a collision between this high speed this nozzle will convert high pressure jet to high velocity jet of this gaseous molecule of oil this oil molecule heat oxygen or nitrogen and it will make a downward flow so you can see that heating and then there is a downward flow so i want to make a downward flow and then only it will come out. And there is a continuously that from top, whatever that vacuum, uh, vacuum level is there. If it gradually goes down, vacuum level will reduce, means the pressure buildup will be there. And this is actually the inside that there is an inside chamber. This is the inside chamber. Wherever pressure will be high because of this gas molecule, but through the nozzle, it will go out and it will heat. So it will have a collision with the gas molecule, nitrogen and oxygen, nitrogen and oxygen. Then gas molecule will acquire the momentum and it will goes down. It will get a downward stream. And this goes down and this gas um, oil molecule heat on the surface, immediately it will condense because there is a cooling arrangement is there. This is the cooler. This is actually that blue color is the cooler. This is blue color is the cooling arrangement. And this is a cooler on the surface. Now what will happen? This downward stream as well as some vapor, oil vapor, it will both will come in this direction. My job is that I need to stop this oil molecule to go out. So that's why up to this region, I, have, I put the cooler. So using the cooler, it will condense, but this gas will not condense because this temperature is not sufficient to condense the gas. Because you can see that I, here I am talking about water cooling. So water cooling means maximum zero degrees, not zero. It will be like 10 degree or like that five degree or sometimes like room temperature. You assume the room temperature. So room temperature, it will be room temperature, this cooling. No ice cooling also, normal cooling. So room temperature is not sufficient to condense the gas. So gas will go out, oxygen and nitrogen. Only that, whatever this heavy oil, so heavy oil is used, that heavy oil and why heavy oil? Because this molecule will heat to this gas molecule and gas molecule get a sufficient, I mean, um, velocity to downward with the down, downward stream. Okay, now in cryo pump, what we are talking about, their temperature is liquid nitrogen or liquid helium. So they are actually this gas, gas molecule will condense or freeze. So that is a different, but here only the room temperature cooling. You understand now? It's clear? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Okay, so if there is no more questions, so I just wrap up and I, I'll do one thing that whatever the video I have shown that this YouTube link, I'll put it in the Moodle so that you can, if you want, you can go through also.
and uh, already i put that in module that your uh, mini project so please start your mini project and uh, this i think some deadline is there in october so please finish it in due time and if you need some discussion so then actually we can have a discussion on your mini project if you not understand so you can ask me no problem okay then thank you thank you sir yeah thank you